Jacking off a horse, Amy's identity, and Melissa eats it all. All this and more on today's Brilliant Observations. Do, 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 do. Well, hello, Melissa. Hey, Ames. How are you? I am sitting here thinking about words like faffing about and wishing I could use them all the time. And I feel I can't. How Would you ever say to someone, I've just been faffing about with my yabba dabba dibby? Well, it's funny that you say that because we have said in our house a hundred times, oh, that's a great word. Let's use that in a sentence today. Kind of joking, but when we are the only people we see because we don't go out, <laughs> when the fuck are you supposed to? We have the, we don't do anything here. We are, we are still COVID leery and Stuart goes to work and, and I have a kid who's, oh my God, is that a designer coffee drink that you just brought I, by the camera. I don't mean to disrupt your train of thought, but in Holy fact, shit. this is evidence of feffery because I was doing battle with the coffee maker. I've known this. I've known this. Guys, it's a I professional fail. coffee maker. You, you could even speak into it and say, I would like a brown sugar oat milk latte with and tell it exactly what you want with and a then, toasted baguette and and then you hear <laughs> and then it would show up in your plate yes well what happens what ha- happened was we'd gone through a round of yum yum coffee in the morning which of course is is you know pristinely foamed cappuccino it's gorgeous guys like, it's, it's i call gorgeous. it coffee it's super it's super not it's very swank and uh and put the milk Back in said refrigerator and later decide I need a coffee to get through my podcast in time. So I set the thing to go. I know it. When the milk is really cold, fresh from the fridge, it foams higher than when it's been through. You have a coffee and you have a coffee because it's, right. it's in a carafe kind of a thing. Okay. So it overgrossed my cup. <laughs> Yeah. So I put it on a plate. So it's not that it's great. It's that it's spilling everywhere. And so it looks like this it's giant, beautiful. bougie, bistro-esque, you know. I was faffing about with the espresso machine before I came in here. And so I want to use the word faff. But I feel like you can't, you can't say that shit with a straight face. Even when you, you can't say blatant to people. You can't say normal words to people because they kind of go, mm-hmm. You, every time you slide one of those things in there, when you use it correctly and you know what it is, half the time, I'm in my head going, did I just use that correctly? Did I pronounce it incorrectly? What's going on? And other people are looking at me like, what she say? Do you ever ask for credit for <laughs> words that you use? <laughs> I should. Like you just Where throw is them out. scorecard? You I throw them it. out in a sentence and you look at them like, nothing? You're giving me nothing for <laughs> using that word? I get, I get no high five. I get no acknowledgement. I get no wink or smirk. I just used a $4 word, $20 word. What are words worth these days? I used, they don't even have SAT words anymore because there are no longer definitions and, and relations like that on the SATs. Oh my God, we are so irrelevant. Listener, why are you here? <laughs> what is happening? It's a deep nosedive. I really was just Maybe saying they're good irrelevant too. <laughs> I was really just giving a greeting. Maybe this is where the irrelevance <laughs> need. So I got a situation so, going on in my house right now. I need to hear about it. I need we, to hear uh, about it. We moved here six, seven years ago, and yeah. the whole house was stucco, and the whole Northeast or or a whole, I don't know, section of the country said, oh, when stucco was put on, initially it was put on wrong, and a lot of damage has happened to a lot of homes. So everybody switches their, <laughs> switches their stucco to hardy plank, siding, whatever. And while doing so, when we did the big switch, we had a guy who sucked do it for us. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, he did yeah. not flash the windows correctly. And oh, all for of, fuck's sake. All of the windows are fucked. So right now, right now in our house, all of our windows are out. And the last three days, they the this massive team came, popped all of our windows, took off all of our blinds, and now... 
light is just pouring into our house. There's no privacy. We go upstairs at night and my husband's like, turn that light off. <laughs> People can privacy. see in here. Fuck privacy. Aren't you frigid cold? It's uh downstairs is chillier because we have like stone on the floor and it just absorb like it's freezing downstairs. But you dress for it. You pretend like you're outside. A hat, glove, scarf. Are you and blasting all of your heat and just no, deciding we're going to No, we're deciding to suffer. <laughs> You're still suffering, but you can Reduce. suffer with heat. We're <laughs> juice. We know how to suffer. Aww. Our people have been doing it for years. We're we're okay. not going to jack up the heat for this. And then it snowed, so they didn't come for half a day on a Friday because it was too icy or couldn't whatever happened. So right I'm now, I'm missing a step. I'm missing a step. I'm missing a lot of steps. This thing was planned in advance and knowable to all, and it didn't involve having the replacement window product in hand on the truck the same day the windows are removed and or doing the house in stages so that you could not have an entire house open to the outside. What am I missing? You're talking sense. So the, all of the windows were delivered. We have all the product here, and they the dumpster and the porta potty were all delivered. And yeah, those seem mission critical to heating your home. Right. Okay. Well, if you are the one who's taking out and put, these guys are working so hard. Undoubtedly, so they're popping yeah. out windows, and the dogs are molting in the basement because all of the noise and all of the they're freaking out. It's rough. And after this, by the way, we get the roof done because our house is falling a fucking you, part. You just haven't had enough challenges. Got it. Yeah. So right now, I have light streaming in on me, and I never realized that lighting is really a crucial mood appearance everything stabilizer because bingo bingo, oh, uh, bingo. Uh, i'm living in a world of just direct sunlight right now and a i don't look good b i, I don't feel say, great you look great see, what do you why do you think you don't look good your skin has skin color to it it's I, shiny it's, it's like there's shiny. a spotlight on you no no shiny in the sense that it looks like there's life in your skin you're alive you're vibrant the sun is glistening on your skin. And it's not even really sun because I'm sure it's gray there. It's very gray here. It's very gray here. It's, it's very actually, French countryside here. Gray. Ooh. It's the gray reflecting off the snow in my backyard <laughs> that you see. But they came I, on that snow thing, day. I don't understand. I don't understand it. Okay. They I'm came listening. on that snow day and they shoveled my driveway. This Aww. team of like eight people. So they could Men get and the women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so they safely could walk around the house. So they basically shoveled an area for my dogs to pee and poop too, because their backyard, the whole thing. The whole that's thing. what you want when you're working is dog pee and poop in the shoveled area that you just created at this client's home. Really glad for that. Sorry. <laughs> Why don't you hurry up and finish and get out of quick here? Quick aside. <laughs> quick aside. Tell me. One of the strategies for people who have doggies and schnur is to lay down a tarp or to lay down a square or five squares of artificial turf that you can quickly pick up so that the idea is once you've got the tarp there, you can pull it up and flip the snow off and then there's green grass underneath. It's cold, but at least there's non-snowy area that's been preserved for said poopers. Anyway, it seems like a lot of work. Can't don't you, you feel like that's for, the snow? don't you feel like that's like for a one dog family? That's like a, or like a very prissy dog. I mean, yeah, I guess that does, but you've nailed it. If you are a one dog, one child set up, you do. You don't you, know. You don't understand. <laughs> you don't know. You don't understand. <laughs> you don't understand how whipped you are because nobody does this. Nobody right. does this. The, the littlest Correct. one wandered downstairs at 830 last night and said, but what's for dinner? And I'm like, you missed it. I, you know, I made dinner when I was hungry. And if you couldn't be bothered to come down the steps, I'm tired. There's the food. Go set it up. And he looked at me with these giant puppy dog eyes. Said, I got the same thing. It. I got the same thing. Why do you insist that we eat together? Nobody does this, mom. Nobody has family meals. I said, you can eat whatever, whenever you want. When your father comes home from work and wants to hear about your day, we have dinner. It's not even every night right? because my daughter works two nights a week. My husband works a couple of nights a week. When we have family dinner, your fucking ass is sitting at the table and stop whining about it. You're welcome for giving you people who give a shit enough to ask what you did today. Just because what you did today is not worth reporting. Right. Does and not really, mean. Just because your life is boring doesn't right. mean that's our problem. That right. means you need to get a better life because you know you got this dinner report card coming where you got to tell me about your day. And if your day sucks, that's on you. I think. Work harder. Yes. Entertain Have me. A dance, better, monkey. Right. Dance. You're going to lose ratings. <laughs> We're going to leave your audience. It's going to leave you. And then hey, where will you be? Before we leave the crazy dog people section of this podcast. Well, and I do want to hear about your living in the outdoors, which evidently is now your new plan. 
Well, it is Sunday. We record on Sundays and tomorrow they're coming back. My son starts college from from his bedroom and they are coming back to do more. Hopefully they'll finish by Wednesday. Oh, wow. But first, my I think I told you my nephew a total non-dog human, like my sister-in-law and brother-in-law have never known from a dog. My nephew got a puppy. He got a designer <laughs> puppy. He got oh. a golden doodle. Oh. Okay. This little chocolate brown yep. pile yep. of deliciousness. But puppy. Oh, okay. Yeah. From Ohio, from a breeder. I'm like, that's a puppy mill. Keep going. And I just kept, are you sure you want to do this? I mean, you live, guess this, in Manhattan. So <laughs> that's a big dog. That's third, like having a roommate. I'm sorry. Manhattan. It was a it was a mini golden doodle. It's a small dog. Nonetheless, you have a puppy and they need to go out every two hours and you have a job where you work from your apartment. And it's a very long story that ends with we almost had a fourth dog this week. We almost took in a puppy, which is something in general I'm adamantly against. <laughs> Just puppies well, in general. Would this have been for the benefit of... The relative, everybody's or sanity, the puppy, and would you have been a permanent caretaker of said? I have said before, canine. let's foster, and everything that comes after the word foster is kind of ridiculous because yes. I easily fall in love with every animal that I don't know walks by me. We know you. I, I if you've got if yourself con, <laughs> that's a different thing. But sweetheart, we know who you are. Yes. So, My sister-in-law said, her son's like, I can't do this. I haven't eaten. I can't go out. He cries in the crate when I leave. He has separation. He's going, like, they stress. And because he doesn't have a childhood of growing up with a dog and knowing what's appropriate and what's not, he freaked out and brought the dog to his parents' house forty an hour from me. And I, she said, well, we're going to try it here. They've never had a dog before. Those are some stupid parents. And they're going to disown the child. Before they disown that dog. And that's not good for any... This, nobody's going to be happy in this situation. There, Two aren't, days there in. aren't humans that can that can train a puppy. There aren't anymore. They're just professionals. Two days in, uh, 30 phone calls, which I loved every one of the phone calls, by the way. I'm not complaining about that. I wanted to support them. I wanted this to work out for them. I wanted them to know love of a dog. But they got a dog with no dog experience in the puppy stage, which That's is stupid. brutal. It's like it's getting a chicken. Brutal. Yeah, I live in Manhattan and I decided to get a chicken. Yeah, and they said, oh, his, my nephew said, he can't go outside. He's not allowed to be outside because he doesn't have all of his, his shots yet. I'm like, he absolutely has to go outside. What are you talking about? But he got, he was told he can't go where another dog has gone because he could get this disease, that disease. I'm like, this dog is going he's to a the- city dog he's gonna have to toughen up that's the way it's gonna be i get it used to it so many weird rules so many weird everything you open the door the dog goes out catches a scent of somebody else who sniffed and shit there before leaves a dump goes back up falls asleep maybe choose a shoe maybe choose all of your shoes like puppies are crazy anyway my sister-in-law calls me a thousand times is this okay is this normal what do i do with this where do i put this what's he supposed to be doing now and terrorizing I said, you and what ruining is he your doing life? now she yeah. said he's just laying there and I said are his eyes closed <laughs> oh my god honey he's sleeping it's okay it's all good do you have work you could do while this is happening do you remember when your baby slept did you look at them and say what should they be doing right now this is a toddler who eats shoes like I don't know how to be clear they uh they said after 48 hours I can't do this so Stuart looked at me and said we're taking that puppy aren't we and I said, well, you didn't say we're not taking that puppy. He Melissa. knows you too. <laughs> he he said, picked you. But it's him too. He didn't used to be this way. But he said, we're taking that puppy, aren't we? So she had one phone call left to make. And she made the call. And somebody said, I, I foster dogs regularly. I will take this dog. I kind of want to keep him though. And that's where he went yesterday. And he went to a new home. But we almost had dog number four, which I guess would be fine with me if it wasn't a fucking puppy. There are people who are meant to train puppies. No, I got to stop you there. I guess it would be fine with me, dot, dot, dot. I I don't know if you had an opportunity to listen to last week's show. I don't know if you had an opportunity. got a lot of responses, too. To think about your life choices. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe this is the moment. Uh, 
when we can think moment. about your life choices. What was some oh, of the Amy. feedback that clearly went straight over your golden head? The, the feedback wasn't, you're fucking crazy. It was, you need to report that lunatic for... Yes, are you okay? We are scared. This not pillaging okay. Pillaging you. Yeah. Love, love you, you. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, but it was never about, why do you have three dogs anyway? Everybody supports my that's crazy... Next. No, no. <laughs> no, you deal with one crisis at a time. Uh, all right. Uh, by the way, if there were a fourth dog, it would have to be a smaller dog because I can't, with my back, I can't I lift any of these dogs. I love that you think there are rules. I love that you think there are rules. That's well, a good thing. It's funny that you put it that way because <laughs> somebody said, well, you know, it's one of my friends who was thinking of, of taking this dog made a comment like, well, we are going to travel next week or we have something coming up. Look, when a dog needs you, it's not, well, what color is he? It's a dog needs you. This is the dog you take. You think I wanted four white I mean, standard poodles in my history? Yes, I do. You're they not get Superman. It, come on. When a dog needs you. When a dog needs you. When there's a need for a home, <laughs> you're that home. You don't get to pick and choose the designerness of you your dog do. or the timing and convenience. That's you then you're do. not rescuing. You're then that's not yeah, what you're doing. Why, you do, why are you rescuing? Are because a dog be a needs rescuer? help. It's not their fault. They need help. I, I understand, yes. but you're not Superman. Like, I don't understand the self-appointed I am rescuer of dogs. I don't. I, I'm not rescuer of all dogs, but I won't buy a dog again. There's nothing wrong with choosing not to spend money when there are millions of dogs who need families and homes. Not and need buying that. a dog and choosing when you are ready is a very different thing than what I heard you loading up. And what you were saying was, if somebody needs rescuing, then I don't have a choice. That That's really where the, the frame of that thought was going. And so then I don't have I'm, a choice what of what color on. it is or when it needs help. If it needs help now, now is when I need to help. I'm sorry if you're going to Europe for 11 days. Find pet care for all of your pets for those 11 days. Um, you just can't picky choosy who needs your help. Um, I'm looking to foster a child, maybe maybe to adoption. Do you have any redheads who already know calculus? Because I don't think I could help with that homework. I like, got to say, not I think that's how, fine. I think that's totally oh, fine. Oh, God, no. That yes, is not how rescue I, I work. works. No, it, well, I mean, we've crossed over into a place where it's really, really unintended by you or me to be super disrespectful talking about humans. But for the sake of it, <laughs> for the sake of it, in foster care, there are kids who are teenagers, who are n very likely never going to have a family experience. Agreed. And if you walk in and say, I'm actually looking for somebody who has these qualifications. Do you have, do you have any of those? And they look and say, yeah, we have about 600,000 of those kids. Pick one. I think that's A-OK. -okay. I would rather have somebody be picky choosy. Right. When, that's not when really what I'm saying, though. Exactly. But that's that's sort of where my brain goes. Because no, that's the not choice. How no. Well, listen, the choice that you're presenting is not you're eliminating your choice in this. And that's what you're not even hearing me push back on. You say when someone needs your help, you don't have a choice. And the answer is, yeah, you do. You don't have to help. You don't have to save any dog. Not all the dogs. You don't have to save any dog. I don't feel dog. that way. I don't feel that way. I hear what you're saying, and those sound like strange words coming out. If you are capable of of assisting and helping find a home or opening your home, and you have me, like, yeah, you do. I think it's your responsibility. I think it's my responsibility to okay. do so. Okay. okay. I, I want no. I want to know. I want to know what superhero this makes you because it's not really. I, I'm not Superman. a superhero. I just no. Have it, no. There no. Do you think Superman? Wants to leave his ice palace and go and save people. He doesn't. He could live here. This place he's is an ice palace right now. Do you think now. Spidey wants to miss that algebra test that he's worked so hard to finally get the A? He doesn't. He doesn't want to dangle. you see No Way Home? I haven't. And my son was getting up in my face and saying, why not? And the answer is because, no spoilers, because I have to get caught up on the others. So... I'm oh I've only, I'm only missing one. No spoilers. Don't it don't was spoil so me. Good. It was I know. Just I know it. And I live so basically good. in the Marvel Cinematic Universe with my children who want to tell me every damn thing. So it's everybody. This is a very big deal in our house. And I I didn't. I got behind. I'm still. I'm going to blame COVID. Everything can be blamed on COVID. I agree. The last the last thirty years of my life. It's COVID. Really, not two years. We're going to say thirty. It's Why more than two years. Why don't I have a years. flat stomach? COVID. COVID. That's right. I, but that's you know, right. like that Kevin Bacon game. That's fair. Yeah. Oh my gosh. 
like the Kevin Bacon game. I can <laughs> relate everything back COVID. to COVID. Yeah, okay. yeah, I absolutely can. <laughs> I can say COVID made me have more edibles. Edibles made me eat more food. More food made me not flatten my stomach. I could get there in seconds. Do I you could- remember that actor, Brandon Frazier? Of course. Who was Okay. They they did a side by side photo of him now and then. Oh no! Oh no! It really it really didn't bode well for Mr. Fraser. And I'm I'm here to say I feel you, pal. It was the kind of thing where it was just the top of the shoulders up. You couldn't see anything, and the angle of the men's jacket blazer that he was suit blazer that he was wearing the suit poorly jacket, fitting. Sword. Poorly fitting. No, it, it it fit on the shoulders, but the angle of the lapel. Told you it was jutting out pretty far to cover what was below it. And I was thinking, oh, wow. It, and I thought to myself, thank you, Brandon, for getting that way. Because you know what? Somewhere in there, you're still the same gorgeous, crazy, not that bright, Tarzan-esque person. Who cares? Right? Yes. I, that's fantastic. Oh, and when he would walk around, when he lived in the basement all that time with Sissy yeah. Spacek. I think that's great. Let's do more of that. And meanwhile... Wow. So I don't want side by side pictures of me either. If they can't make Brandon Fraser look good. If Brandon Fraser has had 2020 syndrome, and I think it appeared to be the impact of more than one year. And I feel like that <laughs> yeah, is it before the, COVID. That, well, I feel like I feel like that's me, but I'm claiming it only happened in the last eight months. He and downward I'm sticking spiral with that. before I'm COVID. With that. I'm sticking with it. I'm sticking with it. I'm sticking with it. Well, the other thing that I'm super jealous of is I didn't actually have the Brandon Fraser basement years. I never had a chance when I was walking around looking like a gorgeous Tarzan. And I would like that. Or whatever the equivalent is, a Bond girl. Whatever the young kids want to be. What do young kids want to be? Is there a TikTok person? You know. Is there someone they want to look like? Come on, you're in touch yeah. with all these dopes. I- I'm on a lot of dog TikTok. I know that's going to come as a Stop shock Stop it. To you. you're, I'm sure that your daughter has tapped into all the vampire diary style, whatever the latest, She's newest... A- Marvel. We're a Marvel Harry Potter family. She okay. Well, surely own. there's somebody who's not Scarlett Johansson. Who is it? Johansson or Johansson? I say care? Johansson, but maybe that's what she says I'm too. American, so maybe it's maybe it's Jost. Maybe she's changed her name because Scarlett, Johansson Jost. Scarlett Johansson Jost. Yeah, that's a lot of J's for you, Scarjo. Back to you. I think that we should have beautiful pinups of ourselves available. I mean, they're not available. I want them to be available because they are they didn't happen, not because they weren't taken. Like, I, I would like to have a beautiful moment in time where Frozen. where we where we can look back on our past. Like, Brandon Fraser must be sitting, Brandon Fraser must be sitting on his voluminous lazy boy now and thinking to himself, at least I swung from trees, guys. Look, look, there are all of my abdominal muscles. You can see each one clearly defined. Like, that would be fun. That would be fun to have if I didn't have to do the sit-ups either. Like, how do, how how are we able to get that backstory completed? That's what I want rescuing. That's yeah. what I'm looking for, gal. Can you help? Well, I'm a big fan of rescue, so I cannot help you because it doesn't work out for me. I'm traveling. <laughs> and you said that's fine. You said that's fine. Anyway, I'm very grateful for all the people who have rise up to take care of this pup, pup, pup. And I'm sure the pup situation is well in hand and frankly, not in your windowless home for the time being. Because I don't can imagine a puppy no, I in addition to this chaos. It's outside. I get to pee outside even though I'm inside. Wee! <laughs> he had a, uh, a little pee pee pad outside my, my nephew's door. So he would open, ring a bell, open the door, walk outside to the pee pee mm-hmm. pad and pee on it. And I'm like, yeah, has he, has he ever inhaled fresh air from outside? He's like, well, it's Manhattan. I don't know how fresh the air is. I'm like, oh my God, you're kidding me. But- Unfortunately for the dog, that method would have trained him that the second you get out the door, he's going to pee there always. So before you go down the steps, you can have a three-year-old puppy who can't wait. And it's just going to, you're going to be cleaning up pee. I, I don't, it's tough. It's tough. Training dogs, not my bag. Not my bag. I pay for that shit. And when you have other dogs in the house, they kind of train each other. And it's a really great sort of, give me your puppy. I'll put him into the gen pop here. And he'll learn what's appropriate and what's not because they won't let him get away with shit. And my brother had an amazing dog. And his name was Roscoe. And Roscoe would train every subsequent dog that was in the family. And Roscoe trade trained Abraham and Abraham tra- like they just it all in the spirit of Roscoe. And at one point, 
there was no spirit of Roscoe left in his dog lineage. And then like he panicked and he's like, what do I do? How do I train a dog? It's always been the dog who trains the next dog. And it's it's very hard. It's a labor of love and poop and the whole I admire everybody who's out there doing the Lord's work. <laughs> I need to s- stop or unfollow all of the rescues and rehomes on my Facebook page because I, when they come up, I'm like, oh, that's not far from here. I, I, I think I think that you're starting to tap into what's going on. I think you're starting to tap into what's Put going on. Put my head in the sand and don't realize there's a huge problem with all I, of these I, dogs. I, I certainly would never have framed it in such a crazy <laughs> profoundly weird context no if you're but if you're trying to (laughs) eat a little less chocolate maybe don't stop following Ahmad Arbery or you know on Instagram who makes those chocolate towers right maybe no stop that's not who that is that's not who that is what his name is Ahmad I'm saying it wrong you're talking about the kid who was killed no, 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 no. His French name is I'm I'm butchering the name because I'm very grateful for the trial that happened with is it Ahmad Arbery is the kid who were glad that all of his tormentors guilty, are guilty, going guilty, and guilty, going to guilty. jail, two of whom forever with no chance of parole. Bring it. The other guy's name is Ahmad and it's a French name. It's not the same as the as the the murdered guy. I, I'll have to look it up and say it. It's it, he's got a show on Netflix. His name is, I forget what his, nah, fuck it, now I have to, I can't stop and look for things. I, you know I can't do it. I physically can't do it. Well, the answer is, if you want to stop eating all the cookies, Melissa, stop buying the fucking cookies and keeping them in your house. Well, And I do that. want to tell you, when I come home, while you're looking that up, when I come home I can't with my that. Trader Joe's haul, my Wegmans haul, my oh, Costco Wegmans. haul, how do you not eat everything you just brought? You bought it because, oh, I can't wait to try that or that looks delicious. I cannot, I don't know, wait. I have very much instant gratification. I just saw Costco has the Girl Scout Thin Mint pretzels. Oh, yes. Have you had them? Yo, of course. What kind of question is that? Are they amazing? They are amazing. So I I thought, can I even bring that in my home without eating the bag? Costco size bag? No. No, I cannot. I thought you were saying that it was at Trader Joe's. So this is anywhere that you, when you go to... Everywhere. When I buy this... <laughs> well, Trader Joe's, I get those dark chocolate covered caramels and I get <sighs> all of the like fun food, like all their snacks. There's a whole aisle of just small package snacks that Melissa would absolutely love. And Well, I, here's, the, here's the real problem with that stuff. When you come home... Let's see if this is it. Go ahead. When you come home with these crazy scores, it doesn't have to even be... That's what it is. They're a score. Yeah. It doesn't even have to be the bulk. It's just the variety that wanders in. Yeah. Yeah, Sometimes a silo full, sometimes a pantry full, whichever. The real problem is like first day of school for me. I feel like I have to open everything. And then when you do, it spoils. So it's like you can't, even if I don't eat it all the way down to the bottom of the tin, because I've opened it, I've now busted through the freshness date and how long it would hang on because I've opened it just to have the one and then close it up again and then a week later it's fucking dead and spoiled no, I don't that's have what I do just the like one. when I have it when I have a new notebook I gotta fucking write in it that moment I really? love it I'd love it to be empty and I can't leave it empty it's such a frustrating situation I have to fucking write in it but I don't want to write in it and ruin it I have stacks and stacks and stacks of unwritten in books because it's so tempting and then I pick it up and I'm like no because then I'll, I'll it can't I can't spoil it it's really, it's really, you don't have that? Well, With I plain do. sheets of paper? Well I, well, I have, I just keep buying notebooks. That's what I do. I just have them all here. <laughs> and everybody wants Shapes, to give you one. That's sizes. the thing. Everybody wants to give you a journal. Every time you go somewhere, you get this beautiful bound journal. It's like, well, I just can't write my idiot thoughts in this. It's got to, it's got to have something good in there. This is bound. It's got a little. This is a really it. nice one. It's I have I mean, only positive thoughts in this right, one. Right, right. <laughs> I haven't can't had like, a positive use thought it, in ages. Use it for like a colonoscopy poop smear. Like I've got to use it for something good. I can't just rip shit out to go to the Costco. Right. You know how this is. I don't have the issue of eating just one and it losing its freshness. I have the issue of eating, and you said it, it's it's an array of things. So I'll eat like 30 pretzels from the thin mint pretzel thing. And then I'll look over and see that I tried a new uh, flat, like dried fruit something twist. And I'll eat like two of those. And I will, (laughs) and then at the end of the day, I'll be like, 
Blech. Why do I feel like shit? You ate everything. That's why you feel like shit. None of it went together. None of it was like. I'm on the Brendan Fraser fitness plan and it's working in reverse for me. I really I, want to see what he looks like. It's now. super, it's super not the way. And I'll say this. I can't be sure yeah. that the image I saw was current. This could have just been a mean spirited worst moment of He's your life. He's been doughy a while. Can we make his doughy face the cover art for this episode? Sure. I mean, it sounds like a good thing to eat now that I, I mean, just doughy, doughy, doughy face. Doughy like Brendan coming back face. full circle, I just want to say that I looked up that Frenchman's name yeah. and I'm going to say it improperly. But when I say it, you'll get to why I blended the two in my head. Okay. His, his first name, I'll spell it A-M-A-U-R-Y. So his first name looks like Amari. And I believe that's how they refer to him on the show. They call okay. him Amari. And his last name is Guichon. So it's Amari Guichon. So it's not. Ahmad Arbery. Right. But it's all of those A's with the Ari in there. Okay. Ari? Anyway, he's a big chocolatier. So, and it's I will great. not be following that. I will not be watching that because you that should. is my you biggest should. vice. You should. No, you'll, here's the good news for you. It's the same as following a tattoo show. You're never going to become a chocolatier of the level. You wouldn't even be able to physically buy the amount of chocolate that they waste on this show. So it's your reason so that makes the me Amazon. Sad. You sh- no, you should just watch it because it's stunning, but it's the kind of thing where it's so wasteful that after they've made these creations, you think, why did you just now waste what? all that chocolate? It's it's as if you've carved something out of gold and then never spent the gold. Like, what do you even do? I don't even know. That's art. a dumb example. Yeah, because now, you're into the art of it. Yeah, but it, chocolate, you could fucking eat it. Like, I don't, if you have that level of talent, make something small, put it on a napkin and slide it over this way. Don't take <laughs> six hours to make some shit I could just look at. That's a stupid. I don't get it. I saw a TikTok today, yesterday, of a woman who waits outside Party City for their haul, right? She goes what? into their dumpster. What? She slides back the dumpster door. <gasps> what? And in there were trays and and streamers they just threw out thousands and thousands of dollars of things that are out of season unsaleable and unsell right so they she goes in there and she goes oh my husband's gonna be mad she pulls out these silver trays she goes oh my god these are heavy these are big trays and these bowls and these streamers everything is wrapped they threw everything away because Makes that's me want to head to party city the corporate said, we're done with this. We don't need this. Dump it. And whatever the employees don't just take, they well, dump. Well, yeah. If I'm sure if there's no if there's no storage capacity and, and the stuff probably costs less than pennies. So it costs more to store it until next year than it would to just, what do they say? Field destroy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, some places take scissors to things and cut them. So if you come back to return it, uh, they have articles of clothing like we've actually destroyed this. And we know we have because this black line means you bought it at Home Goods, or this cut means that we just dis- this was meant to be destroyed, not to be stolen, resold and returned. Like that's they wow, have ways of doing it. But that level dumpster. of fraud is frankly impressive. I hadn't thought about <laughs> bringing it back in. Good for you, cheeky moms. Yeah, I like that idea. That level of fraud is something I hadn't even. Hey, dear listener, I am curious. I am curious to know if you have other aspects of your life that have that level of fraud because Amy is impressed and I am intrigued. Please Wouldn't write us. Would you be impressed though? I mean, you act like, come on. There's something to be said for I really like a long con. I really like those caper-esque movies where it's, you know, this leads to the, the domino effect of all of this thinking and mechanization that went into jilting you out of this giant ruby necklace or whatever it is. Or in this case... The plastic silver esque platters in the back of the Party City. Are dumpster. you Ocean's Elevening this situation right now? Yes, of going I am. To Party yes, City? I am. Yes, I am. I am. I am. No matter I'm- what I do to get in my own way, I am a writer at heart. And I'm looking for the story. I love it. I once just brought back to Coach a leather bag that the seam was ripping. That and I just stole? wanted them to, because they always, and they're like, wait, let me see that. And they're like, turning it inside out, looking for, I'm like, what are you doing? Like, you're, you're, well, we need to make sure it's not something that we zeroed out and we just, we put for destruction. I'm like, I, I shop here all the time. Not anymore. I shop here all the time. Y- you kind of know me. Like, what? Why? Just fix a fucking seam. They have a lifetime warranty on all of their shit. And I just wanted them to. You fix weren't it. even returning it? You were asking them to fix it and they got up in your crack? Yeah. I, I 
don't want to return things that I own that I love. I just want them repaired. Like this house. I would like to return this house as opposed to continue to fix the windows. Can I just say, I just need to pull us all the way on a dog leg here. Surprise. So I want to talk about how impressed I am that you're actually doing these things. Because our house, I'm, I'm learning the new house syndrome. When you build everything new, the lifetime of things all starts to break and fall apart Eight. at the same time. Eight so years. it's it's the it's the snowplow effect. All the snow is moving exactly at the same way. So then there's this whole drop off. Everything stops. So the fact that you're fixing the stucco molded windows and and you're replacing the roof that leaks or is missing tiles, I find that I find that so impressive. We have a we have so many small broken things that just continue that that list of so many is almost overwhelming it will be the whole house and there's just a list they're just smallly enough broken that you don't fix them i've got missing tiles on my roof i gotta i gotta warrant you on the roof and we didn't marry men who are like let me just do this one this hour long project on a sunday we didn't marry those guys my favorite is that we own ladders why on earth do we have five ladders why no one is ever going to frankly the ladders exist to be moved from one garage to the other because they're in the way. We will never, ever use a ladder to get up on a ladder and do anything. Never Well, you have. shouldn't because that seems dangerous. You're not a professional. You're not a... We no longer have a, a lawnmower. Why do we still have the ladders? I mean, and these are expensive ladders. The little giant ladder, like all the fucking things. I just, I, I agree. Why? Why? I'm so, let, get, bring it back. I'm so excited and proud of you for fixing broken shit because I can't seem to get that done in any area of my life. We're not staying here forever. You just built a house, so you're going to stay there for much longer than we're going to stay here. We're going to want to resell this house or sell this house. I would like the broken things in my house to be functional because I, I would like them to function for me. It's not even just the resale We don't think like that. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, neither do you. <laughs> no, I super do. And I, I honestly, even before you brought this up, I was thinking of a friend of mine who you don't know who recently gave birth to a beautiful baby girl and it jacked up her downstairs parts. And she immediately went about the process of trying to get that fixed. And I thought to myself, who would even know where to go or what to do? Got multiple second opinions. Like, how do you, I don't know how to get anything fixed on my body or in my house. I got a broken trash can. It has stumped me for months. And I yeah, feel like, how do you FaceTime. go ahead and get your, how do you get your lips cosmetically addressed? How do you do this? Well, that I I'm know. Super, I'm super impressed. You know uh, that I know how to fi- how to fix your parts and your body. Those those I know. Why? Because you have a husband who's a doctor who knows other doctors. Yes. Who knows? Okay. Oh, that's a job for Spider-Man or whatever. <laughs> that's Spider-Man. He's so much better at training puppies than fixing vaginal lips than I would be. Yeah. Dear listener, please write us brilliant observations at Gmail dot com. I forgot what I was asking you to write about, but you know. You won't anyway, so bring it, and that's great. We love you. (laughs) I guess I was on Facebook, and I requested people in my life, like our Brilliant Observations page, and all of a sudden, all of these likes are coming through, and I'm like, well, what's happening? Oh, right. That's what I did last night. I was really late, and I was like, you know what? You should like Brilliant Observations. I made, let me explain why I was drunk and hiccuping. No I explanation made, necessary. I posted it on our page. I made these pudding shots. Oh, yeah. I did you see them. it? The chocolate pudding. Of course pudding, I did. And I Kahlua, thought, I don't like how far away you live. The vanilla vodka and the Cool Whip. All that I think cho- you, Yeah, I think you need to stop because you need to explain that these are healthy, almost punch-sized, small, shorty glasses. Not just a tiny shot glass, right? And it's filled yeah. with luscious, pudding. creamy... Milky whipped chocolate that's been swirled into a glass that you can lift and and lick out with your tongue, or you can <laughs> the whipped cream which you have spiraled on top of the thing. So I don't know why, and they're filled not only with this creamy, gooey, milky chocolate that's also been whipped with list the alcohols again. It was Kahlua and vanilla vodka. A third a cup, a third a cup, a package, a package, and then you pipe it. So you just it. substitute the water for something you'd really want to drink. And yes. then you can make this whole thing. And now we've got a lot more likes on our page. <laughs> I have to tell you, it's 
so delicious. They're so de- I woke up the other day. I was like, I would love some pudding. It's like nine in the morning and I'm pudding. No, and now morning. I have all these silver platters from Party City. <laughs> and a puppy. Where <laughs> Where else do you would you want to dumpster dive to see what they threw out? Everywhere. I think dumpsters are delightful. I really do love I I am an amateur hoarder. I just don't do it because I know it's bad and wrong and I get overwhelmed with a lot of shit. Like it's amateur. A we- that means you could get better at it, become a I professional. Can. I I I absolutely adore minimalism. It it is my favorite as thing. an aesthetic, but not as a lifestyle. No, I I love as a lifestyle, and everyone who's worked with me knows. People would there was a joke about it in a recent movie I saw because the same character was doing this. They're like, "Are you new?" I'm like, "No, I've worked here for 11 years." And they're like, "Why is there no stuff on your desk?" I'm like, "Because I could leave here at any time. I would keep everything <laughs> pristinely empty. I wanted it all to fit in a shoebox." And I did that. living like that in your house. Look, I kids. did for a long time. People, Look, kids. Would, I could leave at any minute. The <laughs> kids would get so mad. They're like, "Why do we even have these shelves? There's like an apple on it because it would have like the whole shelf would be for display instead of putting the stuff on." Because I like having this stuff, but I want to cram it into places you can't see. The garage, the attic, the closet, all the way, the, that weird long closet that you have that's perfect for extra boxes of shit that you don't want to see. Like shove it all in there so that you can whoa, see this beautiful thing displayed and then pretend like you're seasonally going to replace it with the shit from the closet. Like that's the kind of hoarder I am. I have secret hoards. And they're not so secret. My husband, as you know, over the years, will go into these places that I never return to, and he just thins them out. And by that, I mean he just takes my stuff by the whole box and throws it out. He's thrown out, like, mementos of our kids because he doesn't fucking look or care. He's like, I'm done with this. It's going out. And he has to do it under cloak of night, like when I'm out doing something. Whenever it's trash day and the lids are strategically really full, but also there's dumb stuff on top, it's because he's buried my shit down at the bottom. I do love him for it. You're... Garbage cans are ones that we should go through before the yes. trash guy comes. Oh, You're the yes. dumpster we should be searching. Yes, yes. I steal from my neighbor's stuff when they put it out. It's so funny. And then I'll put it across. Is this like the purple walker? Well, yeah, but I didn't take that. <laughs> <laughs> I took art. Somebody put art out and then they moved. And I'd like, I've stopped taking TVs and and microwaves and stuff. And <laughs> you can't even get rid of those. Why would you take my those? Kid, my kid likes to dismantle them for the copper. So he's got this mountain of copper because you could sell the cot. Like he just, it's a hobby for him. He Stop it. Look, I'm not going to, why am I talking in public? I'm going to stop. Why am I talking in public? Because it's your job. It's what you do. Yeah. Look it. I'm copper. just saying, I'm just saying I like. I like stuff. Even so much so that I dropped the kid at college. You had mentioned that your child is not going to college in p- p- person. Is this a new development? Is this a is this a we knew this was coming kind of a thing? What's going on? I think Mine's doing, at college. I took him to college. He's there. He went. I think they're doing two weeks of of classes while you are Slow in. your role. Yeah. Well, they're doing um, what's shelter in place at Pitt. And shelter in place is you can only do takeout food. Nobody can come in your dorm. You're really stuck in your room with another human. And if my son has 6,000 square feet to, to pad a windowless around, home, a windowless exposure and soon to be roofless exposure, why wouldn't you <laughs> it's take still that preferable <laughs> than being in a room, a tiny room where Every time this other person farts, it's your oxygen mask. Like there's they no required, reason for that. Right. They required negative PCR tests to step on campus. So he had, and we did that. And on the way, we did a pilgrimage to Wegmans? the art store. To the art store. We didn't go oh. to Wegmans this time. We went to the art store. Okay. Jerry's Artorama. Because I always, every time I'm in there, I just jam my hands as deep as they can go into my pockets. And I keep repeating in my head, it's for him, it's for him, it's for him, it's not about you. It's for him, it's for him, it's for him, it's for him. I, he I'd decided, like to see their dumpster. He decided we're going for you. And I wish that I hadn't taken him because I wanted to go by myself. And it was so annoying having him with me because he, I don't actually shop. I just stand and stare at stuff and then I don't ever buy anything. I leave empty handed. So he was forcing me to like pick up shit and buy it. It was making me really anxious. The Where'd reason you I'm telling it, you Jerry's? about Jerry's, I, I restocked on, and that's kind of a weird way to say it. I bought for the first time a whole bunch of uh, paint colors that I would normally not have because I have this idea that I'm going to be painting in an abstract style that 
I love from other people who do it and evidently effortlessly and make lots of money and have deals with restoration hardware and Kitchler furnish Kitchler uh, products. They, you know, so these, these couple women in town are doing this stuff and I'm like, yeah, I can, I can do that. I can do that if they're doing it and I know them, why am I not doing this? Anyway, what I did was stand in the world's longest paint aisle with the little vials of paint. If you've ever, I almost took a picture of it. It was so delightful. It was like being in a museum. And I just stood there salivating, thinking. You didn't take a picture of it? I didn't. My son was with me. And you must have been had, so distracted. We all had masks on and he was making me buy stuff and it was really overwhelming. And I re- honestly had to get out of there because what I was getting ready to do was just take my arm and sideswipe all that shit all right into a card the and then run out the front, like bust through the thing and not pay for it. Go, go, go. I mean, they're artists. They're weak. They can't catch me. They can't get me. I can go. I can do it. They don't have cameras in there. They're too, they're destitute. They're artists. That's the thing that kills me. It's so expensive to do this stuff. It's so expensive to do this stuff. The canvas that I wanted was $342 for the canvas, the canvas itself. How on earth are people selling art for $500 when the, when the actual base materials cost more than $500? I don't, anyway. So I just stood there thinking my dream is to use this as my studio, to just come into Jerry's and to have everything. Did you ever do that? Do you go to the supermarket and say, my dream is to just have the entire spice aisle as as my kitchen work surface. So anything that I want, I can just grab it and use it. And I don't have to think about stocking it or buying it. Like that's what it was to be in Jerry's. I'm trying to think of, I don't cook, so no. That has never been a, I'm trying hair, to think of hair what products, store. Beauty products, yeah, what would it be? I don't really I don't wear know. makeup. I'm trying to think of a store that would be that appealing to me. T-shirts with sayings on them? <laughs> Is there a t-shirts with sayings on them? Is there store? a t-shirt shop that you would like to just is there, have in like your a, closet? You could, just, you could just get like one of those litho presses. I don't even know what they're called. A screen. Make my own. Press. Yes. And then all the time. I thought of just, buying one. It might have been in my shopping cart I on Amazon. Briefly. One. Now but. we're here. You get me. You get me. I thought of buying one to have here. Cricket, all the bottles. Too. Because the paint. It, there's something also so provocative about it because it's the same product in every possible shade so what'd laid you get? out in rainbow order from the ground all the way Costco size over your head to the ceiling that you can't even reach in identical bottles everywhere. The Amish market. When I see all of the, the donuts Amish lined up. The Amish market! Yeah. They have all of the donuts and baked yes, goods lined up. you could up. just live at the Amish market. Remember when you were there and they had all of the different, it. all of the different like, um, like, what were yes. they? Sprinkles and sugars yes. and all yes. the different colors. Yes. And you walked by and yes. saw them and you pulled out your camera. It was all there. <laughs> it was, <sighs> yeah. All right. I get guy it. whose voice was so high made yes. me think, are you a eunuch? <laughs> yes. Hi, ladies. Can I help you? Yes. And he was like seven feet tall. I'm like, what are they doing to you with these chalkboards and no zippers? And you didn't want to rescue him? <laughs> I kind of, I kind of did, but also yeah. I don't want the responsibility. I but got I'm traveling. Coming up. I'm traveling. I won't be able to take care of him. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Abortion is not a joke, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Especially to the Amish. Not a joke. So, yes. All right. I finally get it. I finally get it. I've also walked into Michael's and seen all of the yarn that I like and all of the colors yarn. lined up. Okay. So imagine had they had the, okay, perfect, I got you. the perfect skein of yarn, but then they had it in every possible color variation in rainbow order spread out as far as the eye could see in all directions. They do. And you're just, and you're just standing there. Looking at it, and you can touch it, and you can use it. You could knit yourself a big giant onesie or whatever the hell you knit with it. No, I picture if I made the exact same hat out of every single one of those colors. Yes, yes I picture yes, yes. my yes. shelf with all of those hats, as opposed to all of the unused yarn. I picture the shelf with all of the made hats in them. So yeah, I I'm with you on that. Okay, I'm starting to get a chub, and I don't even have a penis. I'm telling you, like it's exciting to me because I'll pull out like three of them that I made with the same yarn, and I'll be like, this is a really solid, nice hat. Why didn't I get it in every color so I can have it? Because I don't need it anymore. Well, maybe there's people that do this with lipstick or nail polish or something. But there's something about the identical product. I I even get this way about the spray paint. Whenever it's I have marketing. to spray paint they something, know what yeah. I just stand there and I'm like, but I want all of you colors. I want every color of the spray paint. I want this to be my closet. I want this to be my garage with all the spray paints. And then whenever I need a spray paint, I have it. Like, again, I feel like Didn't I'm- Didn't you once that. describe your garage like that? Huh? I think you once described your garage as having like all of the- car I guess it's car products so maybe your I, garage is I your husband paint no I I 
got a lot of paint from my neighbor and also I keep all the paint and it's toxic and you're not supposed to keep it. My neighbor was like, oh, do you know how to dispose of this? Because I was like, wow, that's a lot of paint. She's like, where could I dispose it? And I said, you're just getting rid of it. She goes, yeah, I have to dispose it properly. I said, I'll take care of that for you. I said that about I said that about medications. I loaded it up into one of those wagon wheel things that we have for lacrosse that has fallen out of favor because we have so fucking many of them. And so I just put them all in there, kept it, rolled it into the corner of the garage and there it sits. I think actually my husband finally threw it out because he got so angry that I had done that. He was mad that I did it, but I'm like, I'm going to use this paint. For what? (laughs) How many dogs do you have? That's for what? (laughs) That's for what? I'm a collector. (laughs) I'm going to use this paint. (laughs) I'm a collector. <laughs> There's always you can always use paint. I'm gonna use it. I almost, I want to get one of them paint tumblers. <laughs> we have we have a two plus acre p- tumbler, so you can mix it up. Like, is that what you're doing? Yeah, because when because the paint gets you're bad, gonna go to Home Depot. Separate, so you gotta go. What do you need? That machine. How much you pay for that machine? You're gonna stand outside Home Depot and see what they throw out. I'm not <laughs> Just going take that it. home. Ooh, it's not a bad wait, place. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Where's your dumpster at? If I drive around to the back of the Home Depot, I can't go there, the Republicans. If I drive around to the back of the Lowe's, they got stuff back there. Did you just ruin Home Depot for me? Oh, honey, they're the world's biggest Trump supporters. What's going on with you? Uh... Yeah. Lowe's is Lowe's Home Improvement. I've also worked for them for many a time. They've paid for lots of things in this house. Thanks, Lowe's. So, yeah, you can. They're North Carolina company. Mooresville. So you'll just hang out by their dumpster and bring home whatever large paint shaking machines they have it, and then give it to you, your son when you say it out loud <laughs> it sounds problematic but when i had it in my heart it felt right so thanks for busting that dream 2022 i think you should make your youngest just stand outside with half the paint cans full of half paint and just they're shake no, them they're no use they're no help have There's, his whole team just shake them <laughs> they're just, they're just, they're not going to help me. You're doing they're... off-field training today? Shake this can. <laughs> <laughs> no? Uh, That's not going to happen? No? Hey, I Aim, wouldn't know how to shake a can if there was money in it. Hey, Aim, I looked on the board and it said, jacking off a horse. And Hey-o! after I laughed out loud and everybody in my family, because it was dinner time, said, why do we all have to be here? Why is mommy laughing? Uh, I thought, wait a minute, is that from Yellowstone? Well, the idea is from Yellowstone. Oh, no. And you took it off board? What'd you do? What did you okay, do? Let's, let's back up. On our board, as one of the things that we wanted to be sure to bring to you, is jacking off a horse. So there's all this, there's all this folklore around the gigantic member of a horse. And then there's a television series that busts it wide open. In the show, Yellowstone, an actor, let's remember, this is an actor, let's remember, this was scripted. There is an actor who is not a veterinary student, who is not interested in being a horse trainer. He is interested in being an actor for a paycheck, right? He is acting. He went to his job and the script said, you are going to hold the bag that a living horse is going to ejaculate into and we're going to film it and you're going to do this whole sex act on camera, and it's not faked. It's just the real deal because it's not pornography if there's an animal and a vet involved. And I'm here to tell you, is it though? Because (laughs) really, this actor stood there with a face that I guarantee you, he was not acting. He was not acting. This was just, what now, Kevin Costner? What do you got me doing now? Okay, Uh, at a certain point, can I get on the Alan Baldwick film? Because it would be a little bit easier than Safer. having to hold this leather bag while a giant, it was very long. It was, it was longer than an adult man's femur. It was a very long erect penis coming at him. And they, the horse, clop, clop, clop with the giant long dangling, longer than your whole arm. It probably was a full human arm's length. Picture a penis that long and about that size, right? Coming at you with the bulbous end. And he comes and mounts this leather, properly called hobby horse. It's just a big leather uh, mound that he claps up onto. And the actor comes up alongside and slides a leather bag over the erect penis and waits for the horse to hump a pump a pump into it until he ejaculates into the bag. 
which has a balloon, rubber balloon on the bottom of it to catch all the semen so they can impregnate another horse. So basically, we just filmed and showed this is how a stud farm works. And guess what also? That's gross. And I can't <laughs> believe that this poor young man had to do it. And did he get a, do you get like hazard pay? Is there like a bonus involved? What, what would you do if you came into work and say, today on the podcast, you're going to jack off a horse? Go. What kind of podcast am I doing <laughs> <laughs> that requires? <laughs> Look, I'm in the comfort of a very well-lit room right now. It's super... Uh, it's a lot of air, a lot of air flowing through. A lot of breeze in my hair, winter breeze. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't see a situation where I would... Uh, Do I you feel like that's the culmination of your acting training? Is horse jack offery. If you're lowering it to M Melissa's level, I have gone with my husband when we were looking at puppies, but to buy a puppy um, before we started our rescue world. And the woman said, help, help behind behind closed doors. Two of her dogs got stuck together. And oh, no. we were there visiting puppies that she had. Like they were 12 week, over 12 weeks because they couldn't sell them or thought they were keeping them and didn't. We were looking for an older, right. And she said, help, help. And my husband went back there to see if he could disconnect these two dogs because she, I don't clamp, think it was a- Clamp down too hard. Yeah, I don't think it was a planned breeding. I think it was a, somebody looked left when they should have looked right and clink, these two dogs got stuck. So- is there a point in your life as a physician you ever think you're going to be prying apart two dogs from yeah, a I, I that's totally – nope. I feel like this is – this is – You work with horses. You signed you're on to – You're close enough. No, you're close enough. You're close enough. You're a doctor. You've signed on so to help people. So actor is not – he's actor not is his not, character. I, I right. did not sign on to, to – but maybe he did. Did you think I'm going to be an actor? That means I'm going to be using my body I physically in different ways. To jerk off a horse. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like I sure hope on this next series. <laughs> Is that like a level in the Stanislavski method where you get to like horse check offery? Yes. Where they somehow. Level up, level up, <laughs> level up. <laughs> yeah. I just want to know about that conversation that the producers had. Do they start out by saying, what do you think? For uh, women, it's what Brad. degree of nudity there is in a scene. Oh, I, I didn't realize I would have this. Oh, it was in your contract. Did you not read the eighth page of your contract? No, I read the first page. It said, acting with Kevin Costner. It said, contract with my name on it, and I signed it with blood. Right, and it said, <laughs> Kevin Costner on page two. I didn't know on page eight it said, ejaculate a horse. Like, that was, mm, okay, I'll still do it. He did oh it. Oh, my God. He did it like a fucking champ, though. He did it. The poor man's face. Would you do it? In any circumstance, for any reason. Not, not as part of a, eliminate any of that. Would you, could you conceivably do this? Jerk off a horse? Yeah. It, do the thing that I just described. In the context I, of, I, I, in the context of this has nothing to do with you. You are simply facilitating the transfer so that you can impregnate another horse. Like in the, in the sense of what this kid was doing. He wasn't doing something. It wasn't about sexual gratification for him. It wasn't about him at all. Would you do it? I sure hope it wasn't about sexual gratification for him. Oh, you meant the horse. <laughs> I meant the kid. Oh, would yeah. You, would you do this? Would you? Or is there any circumstance where you would do this? Of course, there's. If to save my children's life, of course, there are circumstances where I would engage in really sketchy things. I, I, of course, yeah. For for the sake of my family, to like you have up on the board. 20 million or 100 million. And I'm like, well, what would I do for $20 million? What would I do for $100 million? I saw a TikTok that said, for $2 billion, would you punch me? And before she could finish asking her husband a question, the husband said, yes, <laughs> <laughs> I would punch you for a billion dollars. Like, well, yeah, of course I would punch you in the fucking face for a billion dollars uh, as hard as I can, which was the actual question. Yeah, I would do lots of things for maybe 20 million or 100 million. I highly doubt he got paid that for doing that activity or I, the whole show. I, I'm, I probably... You still don't know his name. No, what do I care? I like him as a character on the show. I'm not going to go out with him. What's the difference? I might do it for free. I might actually just do it. If I if the scenario presented itself, I might just do it. I feel like I've already watched it and I don't think I would do it for free. I think that's kind of out of my wheelhouse far enough that I would need to get paid to actually take 
take a role in that's this. fair no that's that's super fair because I would not I've seen do, it already <laughs> yeah yeah and I I'm it's really about understanding it and, and the experience of it and, and the he, learning he per, he portrayed it pretty well yeah he learned because well, we I saw put it, it in the context of a friend of friend of ours actually was a pre-vet student one of her tasks in undergrad was to stick your hand elbow deep it's not hand your elbow I've, I was gonna say I thought she went up to her shoulder she had to stick okay. basically her whole arm yes inside a cow yes through the through the butthole through the, through the butthole. butthole yeah do you ever what, watch what Dr. Do Paul? but like what's the value of that there surely there's nothing in there you're trying to get no you're, you're checking or something you're checking organs to make sure everything's fine Dr. Pole I used to watch this big vet show and then he went shoulder deep and I was like I think we're done here <laughs> like, I, yeah, think, I don't I think just, I'm done with Dr. Pole I don't feel like that's uh, yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. I'm trying to think of it from an experience standpoint. Yeah, I, I get that. I would do anything, anything for, for you it. except stick my arm but up I... to my elbow in a cow's ass. Yeah, yeah. That's how I... you check and make sure that yeah, there's I'm, no I'm lump back. or I'm yeah. You're. That. I'm not doing that. Yeah. Mm-mm. I married a man who does that with people. Yeah, I don't want that. Do I need to I say anything more than that? <sighs> We had an incident here, which I'm probably going to cut this out of the, I'm probably going to cut this out of the pod. But I, part of the reason I married him is because you can't gross him out. You just can't. The only things he really doesn't like are like eyeballs. Right. And I think your husband has that issue too. Oh, on steroids. Yeah. Right. Although Stuart can eat an orange without thinking he's eating an eyeball and your husband cannot. We have other problems here. We have other problems here. It's but like nice. there are times where I'm like, no, go away. Don't see me like this. And he's like, what is it? I, I'm, you know, I got this. Like what? I love that I can't gross him out. And, and there was an opportunity to gross him out this week. And I almost took it because he didn't. You can't believe- hold back. We've talked. We've talked about the leather rubber bottomed bag for horse. Rubber bottom bag. Boot you can't with hold sperm. back. With the sperm. You can't, <laughs> <laughs> you can't hold back. Just say it's about a friend. We won't know. Okay. I have a friend whose husband's a doctor and. Yep. Brian, 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 Brian. And. That's fucking hot. That's fucking hot. I you got window sheets. money. <laughs> yeah. Hanging out the window. They shoveled that walk. Woo. <laughs> Boots with the fur. There's a dumpster. <laughs> Use it. Oh, no, because people are dumpster diving <laughs> to get all the trays and the streamers and the bed sheets. I hope you can get authorization to discuss this on pod because I really feel like that is that elevates and already it, was, it gets so fucking mad. Right. How much how much more elevated can this dick be? I'm so sick of it. That's fucking hot and perfect. I love it. God, so irritated with them. I will get permission, dear listener, if you just heard, <laughs> this is something you just heard. I mean, there are people who he works with who listen to this podcast. But You're a lucky bitch, okay? You're just a crazy lucky bitch. That's what I'm saying. And it totally fits his whole MO. Brian! He would be, be a very generous, it doesn't work for you. I told you I hate that drop. Listen, he, listen. It's in every show. I know. I know it. And hate it for sure. Brian. Listen, yeah. if people didn't already understand and perceive him as a wildly generous and accepting lover, then they don't know him already. Okay? That's let's, it. Let's not use the word lover. Let's use the word human. He's a wildly generous. It's not a lover. Human. Well, I just, it's, well, that it's, word. It's creepy. Does that word Does bother it, you like it bothers me? No, because I would never introduced- use it about anybody that I'm with. Okay. <laughs> Have you, but you did about somebody that I'm with. <laughs> So it doesn't apply to me. So you don't yeah. go to cocktail parties. Here's here's my hi. This is my hi. lover. I'd like you to meet my lover. <laughs> I'd rather you. I'm doing that now. I'm going to do that now. For so my declaration for 2022, my word is uncomfortable lover. Yes, not I'm uncomfortable. Doing it. Just use lover, lover as many times as you can, referring to your partner. I was saying my word for 2022. It's so sad because it's fucking true. Is going to be almost. That's my word for 2022. <laughs> Almost. Oh, almost. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's it's sad. Every, yes, it is. <laughs> that's really sad. <laughs> you got it. Welcome to the party. No. So. Dear listener. <laughs> all right. I'm going to leave it in. I'll see what he says. Dear listener, that is your goal re- oh. to refer to your self or to your partner as as lover, lover. in a sentence in, in public. 
to other people. Just Good not luck. to your not to your parents. That's just awkward as fuck. Oh, okay. God. Just odd. I know you're not cocktail partying as much as you used to. I know you're not out in a boot as much as you were. Nor will that. you be after you start this habit of referring to your sexual trysts as lovers. You won't get invited anywhere <laughs> after you. Almost. I was almost invited to a lot Don't of places. 2022. Until I effect. said, yes, I was just out at a movie with my lover. Wait, uh, what? <laughs> no. No. What movie? Yeah, that's not what they'll ask. Yeah. I was watching the Star Wars trilogy with my lover. Were you alone? So I saw this no. guy jerk off a horse with my lover. Yeah. Yeah. Use it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Use it today if you can. And okay. every day. All right. Once a week. Use it once a week in a sentence. And please let us know at brilliantobservations at gmail.com. Brilliant Observations on Facebook. Listen Brilliant on Twitter and Instagram. Or go to Brillob Squad on Facebook and you'll see a little smaller discussion group that's sprung up and is getting bigger and bigger. You could also find me on Peloton at on hashtag Brillob Squad. <laughs> you can find me with my lover and windowless house and soon to be roofless somewhere in Pennsylvania. Oh, it's perfect. I'm going to say find me that. in the in the back parking lot of Party City. You should be. Waist deep in a dumpster. Yep, I could so. not believe, I hope I can find it again. I never, you can never find a TikTok again, but I, maybe I'll put in dumpster diving and then get lover things come up. Oh, my. my God. And the worst part is, fortunately, my phone is nowhere near me. But if your phone is in the room with you, yeah. it's listening to you right now. And everything that you're saying between lover, the horse ejaculate, lover. the fraud, and the lover, I think you're going to have a really interesting, that sounds like a great French movie. <laughs> Can't wait to see what ads pop up on... On everything for me today. Anything I search, oh. what ads are there? Lover. Here, let's see if I could really affect it. Vibrator. <laughs> Lover. New sheets. She's, she's let's see what happens. Down. Let's she's see what happens. Down. She's doubling down. <laughs> it's a triple down. I'm curious. Wow. Dear listener, thanks for coming out, staying in, doing whatever you did. Lover. Maybe I'll stop referring to you as dear listener and maybe just be dear lover. What do you think about that? She's really, she's embraced it, you guys. I'm getting a little hot and steamy. I really like this show all of a sudden. It's very good. Yeah. No. <laughs> we love you guys. Thanks for listening. All right. Take Until care. Until next time. Bye. Bye.